don't flash your issue, wish you I'd say Why they think I'm condescending, huh? these condescending When your comments mention me, there's consequences There's holocaust, reading all the war While I'm sipping Molotovs with the oligarchs of the Oval Office Leave your caucus in the car with car marks and car exhaust With the windows drawn, smoke your lungs like Benny Anders. But you wish it was electric, but you've been Amish Roll the dice, the soldiers hype, the psycho potent guys Pyro burning mics, homicidal lines, I'm writing on spines You viral lines of mine, oh why I sight a cryptic slice I'm sick, I spit, how quick they fit but Whoever sees this and subscribes right now will get a free roast Just look in the mirror What's going on YouTube? It's Noxil and we're back for a reaction series So today Today Man Today is Friday And guess what? We are back on track with more ERB Now you guys know I read the comments of good, the bad, the ugly, the troll And this is definitely, definitely one of the next highest requested ones I'm excited about this one Because I love Gordon Ramsay And it's against Julia Childs Now listen, quick disclaimer guys I don't know much about Julia Child. Honestly, I don't know a whole hell of a lot about cooking. And I just want to enjoy this. So I didn't really feel like trying to do a bunch of research and stuff beforehand. So I just Googled uh, Julia Child quickly, read a couple paragraphs, and I feel like I'm well qualified to completely break down each and every one of these bars. But before we go any further, I'm going to give a quick shout out to the song in the intro. If you guys like that, yes, I'm a rapper myself. There's a good chance to like my breakdowns. What did I think about music? You'll probably like my music as well. I have an album, Chaos Area 20 Tracks, Blood, Sweat, Tears, Heart, and Soul. If you want to support me, guys, and support this channel directly, I'd appreciate it if you check it out. The link will be below. But anyways, anyways, we know what we're here for. Gordon Ramsay, Julia Childs, step up to the plate. Let's see what you got. Yes! <laughs> this is like Lord of the Rings meets Hell's Kitchen. Just the epic cinemagraphic cooking music to build the suspense as we rise into one of the greatest battles the most vicious of beefs between two chefs yeah all right i think i've i've done enough we get, we get the picture let's do it also who's hungry i haven't eaten lunch and this is not a good idea bottles of restaurant gordon ramsay <laughs> Make a perfect risotto. Right. This is child. Welcome to the grown up's table. Exactly two minutes. <laughs> oh, wow. I love the production involved in this one. I mean, yeah, they spend a lot of time in the production. Normally, they're just in front of a green screen the whole time. We got a whole set set up right now. You got people moving behind him. How busy he is. Mr. Ramsey in the flesh, baby. Epic Lloyd putting on the English accent. And I like how he's like, that's how you make a perfect risotto. Right there. That's how you mix this up. Oh, who's on the list now? Miss Child? Welcome to the grown-up table. Get it? Because her last name is Child. She's the child. She can't sit at the grown-up table. Gordon Ramsay holding it down with the chef lingo. Perfect risotto. Right. This is Child. Welcome to the grown-up table. I've exactly two minutes. And you should be grateful. Because I'm in the fucking <laughs> weeds. With all these shows to pitch. I'll keep my ovens preheated. And my pilots greenlit. I'm a sea- What the fuck is that? With all these shows to pitch. I'll keep my oven- He's rescued. Preheated. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay cooking with pebbles. There's some great visual humor being used right now. And my pilots greenlit. So like the pilot light in the oven, when it's on, he keeps, uh, I, you know what, honestly, so much is happening right now, my brain doesn't even want to process it. I'm just enjoying the visuals. Let me, let me try to process the lyrics one more Risotto. time. Risotto, right. This is child. Welcome to the grown-up's table. I've exactly two minutes, and you should be grateful, because I'm in the fucking weeds. With all these shows to pitch, I'll keep my oven preheated. And my pilot's greenlit. <laughs> so, when you have a pilot, right, and then you send that to the network, and then if the network gives it the green light, then you can start filming more for the series and roll it out. And how many shows is Gordon Ramsay a part of? Like he's the host of so much right now. It's uh, it's crazy. So I just I love that how it's like, hey, I don't even have time for you in this battle. So let's get on with it. And you just feel like the rush and everything going on around him. This is this is cool, man. And the music, woohoo! This music just makes you want to throw down. In the fucking weeds. With all these shows to pitch, I'll keep my ovens preheated and my pilots greenlit. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's really going to be cooking bars on this one. Obviously, when this oven's preheated, like it's ready to go. It's ready to pop that bird in there on Thanksgiving, baby, and baste that shit. 
You know what I'm saying? Sexy Chicken t-shirts available. KnoxvilleMusic.com. But also, playing off of the um, the way that his uh, skillet is already preseason. How did he put it? He said pilots list. I'm a seasoned skillet. You're a yeah. damn spring. I'm a seasoned skillet. So over time, as you use the skillet, you know, it develops a layer on top of it. So you don't have to put anything down over it. It makes it non-stick. And it actually adds to the flavor of what you're cooking in, man. I remember being uh, in the back streets of Italy one time. And then a uh, buddy of mine, he took us into his, his grandmother's house. And she just had like this old cast iron skillet, man, like 150 years old. And it just had this layer on it. But I was like, man, that's that's kind of dirty and, and gross. He's like, oh no, 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 no. Adds to the flavor. You need to you need to just have some patience. And yeah, one of the one of the best meals I think I've ever had. But I totally digress. We all know if you're a true master chef like me, with the kung fu knife chopping, you do not spray Pam on a skillet. Alright, that's a big no no. You take the olive oil and you use that. Alright? Pam, no. Pam is whack. Ham is not ham, people. Don't worry about it. I'll keep my oven spray heated. And my pilot's green list. <laughs> I'm a seasoned skillet. You're a Pam spray pan. Of Michelin stars. You're like the Michelin man. I'm rolling in town like beef wellington from Holleran. And I'm shitting. That's my, that's my favorite vicious bar so far. <laughs> Listen, I'm getting Michelin stars. And what is the most stars you can get? It's three stars, isn't it? And his, uh, a number of his restaurants have gotten Michelin stars, which is just like, you know, critically acclaimed, highest ranking. It's what, you know, high profile restaurants hope to achieve. They want those Michelin stars. So he's saying, man, I've, I've achieved the highest of heights here. You? The, the only Michelin that you're getting is looking like the Michelin man. You, get, you, you like your food. Okay, it's okay to like food. I like food too. Just exercise more. Like the Michelin man. I'm rolling in dough. Like beef Wellington from Holleran. And I'm shitting. Rolling in dough. But also dough is in money. Rolling the dough like a beef Wellington. That you roll in dough. It's more of a, a British dish. Have you guys had a beef Wellington? If you haven't, you are. You are missing out on the finer things in life. Lucky Charms for breakfast in the morning. Beef Wellington for dinner at night. That's how you live the dream. You're like the Michelin man. I'm rolling in town like Pete Wellington from Holleran. And I'm shitting on you like I'm whack flows in I love how he gets so angry there because uh, Gordon is so categorized by his anger. And when he just goes off, he just starts cursing. I mean, every other word is, is just dropping F-bombs left and right. Watch your fucking language, people. But I love how with his delivery and personality, everything raises and the music behind it raises another level too. And then Whack Flow's Intolerant playing off of Lactose Intolerant. Yeah, nice little scheme there. Okay, okay, that was solid. That was, I mean, honestly... I don't feel like there was a ton of super vicious bars for a battle. But what I really like was just everything going on. Just all the visual imagery, all the time and thought that was put into it. Yeah, it's it's almost like it was meant to be, listen, I'm so busy, I'm so successful. I don't really have the time to be dealing with you. But, you know, while you got a minute, here you go. Here's here's what you get from it. You're a Pam Spray Pam Michelin star. You're like the Michelin man. I'm rolling in town like people. I love Lloyd's face there and just the the imagery. You're a Pam Spray Pam of Michelin stars. You're like the Michelin man. I'm rolling in town like Keith Wellington from Holleran. And I'm shitting on you like... Literally, he's in Hell's Kitchen. You got the fire and the flames behind him. It's lit. Black flows in Holleran. Isn't that a wonderful thing? A grumpy little chef who thinks he can bring an assault to justify getting wrong with a butter-loving queen of the Bourguignon ball. I rock hard as concrete. <laughs> Is that how she actually sounded? That is such a unique cadence. It has to be. I love how everything rises. And then when uh, Julia Childs comes in, the production just switches. Everything drops back down, doesn't it? And she just very casually but callously starts to deliver her lines. Bourguignon buff. That's a... Uh, isn't that, is that beef stew? I don't know. Listen, I, I don't know all of my culinary language. Somebody's going to have to help me there. But obviously, I take it as she's playing off. Like, you you want this beef? Oh, I'm going a, I'm to a give you that beef dish. You, you look out for it. And I start to justify getting along with the butter-loving queen of the Bourguignon ball. And she did, I did read this. She did, she loved her butter. All right, she, she really liked her butter. Did it, the Michelin dish and all that. So he's taking the, she, he, she is taking, God, I hope Julia Shaw's is not a, he i really would have messed that one up wouldn't i but she is taking the michelin's the michelin mandis 
and is flipping that back. Like, yeah, I do. I do love my butter. It's okay. Let me let me show you how to cook with it. Let me show you how to mix it up. Wow, that's a good rhyme scheme. Heart is concrete. Here she goes up in the cadence and then playing into the palm frites. And then the other one was, uh, been chopping the palm frites since you sucked on your mom's teats. I love that rhyme scheme. This is good writing, man. And obviously hard as concrete. Get it? Rock hard. It's literally rock hard. But how she rocks the mic, she rocks the mic hard as concrete. I rock hard as concrete on top of these palm frites. Been chopping the palm frites since you sucked on your mom's teats. And palm frites, also known as French fries. But here in America, it's freedom fries. You guys remember that movement? I don't know about you, but I like my French fries. American. Yeah. Rock hard as concrete on top of these bomb beats. Been chopping the palm freeze and just sucked on your mom's teeth. I, I mean, that's a swag right there. Like, look, I've been doing this for a long time. Before, before, we, you was just a little, little baby Gordon up in Scotland sucking on that whiskey teeth. Beat on top of these bomb beats. Been chopping the palm freeze and just sucked on your mom's teeth. I served America dutifully and I sliced lard beautifully. I'm reigning supreme from shark repellent to shark I'm gonna address that in a second. Hold on. Slice lard beautifully. Slice lard beautifully. Like, have you ever tried to slice lard? That shit is sticky. You can't really, you can't really slice it beautifully. She's saying, girl's got skills. All right. Supreme from shark repellent to shark So many d terms being used right now. I wish I would have actually done some research. But I do know the shark repellent story because uh, she served in the World War. And she helped to develop a type of shark repellent because, get this people, things you don't always have to think about when you're at war. Is a shark going to come and blow up my torpedo or blow up my missile? Yeah, so she cooked up this shark repellent that they would drop into the water and they still use it today actually. And when they, you know, fire their shit off, you don't have to worry about blowing up a bunch of sharks. I mean, yeah, that's a real thing. That happened. And then charcuterie? I don't know. Should I take a stab at that one? Charcuterie is in like dealing with knives? It's like sharp? Or is it just like a type of cooking? You know what? It's got to do something with French cuisine because that's what she specialized in and what she really brought over to the state. So we're going to type a French cooking word, verbiage, thing, noun, adjective, adverb. Yeah, hot cuisine. Get it? Playing off of like hot, but also hot because French type of cuisine. Yeah. Oh, and one F word because Gordon Ramsay likes to drop F bombs left and right. Has he dropped an F bomb yet? He needs to. And, crush your arms and, that B -boy stand. and when B boys, you know, once you do a nice dance move like I used to do in all of my B boy battles back in the day. Cross your arms and yeah, swag it up. supreme from shark repellent to shark shoes. Go on and cross your arms and that B boy stand. When it comes to hot cuisine, there's one F word. Fry. Here's a nice a moose moose. Take a poor abuse juice. At a 30 year timer, what a huge dude. That's a great setup. And again, I love how she's taking these fancy words and she's making them rhyme within the scheme. That is that's really good. Cross your arms go. and that B boy stand. When it comes to hot cuisine, there's one F word. Fry. Here's a nice a moose moose. A moose bush. Listen, if I make a little mistake, you guys will comment and let me know. So I'm sure somebody will comment what all these things mean. But a, a moose bush. We're gonna call it whipped cream. Poor abuse you. Set a thirty-year timer. What a huge dude. Poor abuse you. Thirty-year timer. And then voila, what do you get? You get Gordon Ramsay. That's a great diss and a great setup. I love how she cooked that one up. Right? She sprinkled in the right ingredients of dis in there and just flipped it on him and great with the cooking imagery the whole time. Navy Pamby Candy Ass Pansy Gordon Ramsay. That's a nice rhyme scheme right there. I like that. He's a pansy. wrap your way out of a pastry bag i felt like that was one of the more low-hanging fruits to use right playing off of some type of rap the raps we do on this mic the wrap because a lot of things get wrapped 
wrap a pastry bag when you, you know, squirting that stuff. No sexual innuendos there. Keep your mind above water, people. And yes, and they got a grand tour and wrap your way out of a pastry bag. Understanding, I laugh and create you for rage and destroy. But fear, my dear boy, is less righteous than joy. I'm glad you got that. I really love just the characterization and the personality with those bars and the delivery. That's really, really good. Both of them actually, what really stands out to me is the personality. Um, Julia Child's the rhyme schemes were money. Those were just absolutely on point. And I love, this is a good diss to me because this is, you know, getting down to the heart of the matter, really. You know, how does Gordon Ramsay portray himself? And he uses fear and he uses, you know, shock and awe tactics to make tv that people want to watch where she's like you know i i made food with love i made it the right way and you know there's a saying by a lot of chefs you know if if you love the process and enjoy it that love comes out in the dishes that you make whereas you know if you're exuding fear and hate and anger the whole time you surely can't produce the same type of love making food that you can really having a passion for it although i have eaten at gordon, gordon ramsay's restaurants and uh food's still delicious there i mean it's fine Maybe, maybe I just have a black soul. I'm glad you got that off your giant flabby chest. I'd call you donkey, <laughs> but you look more like Shrek when the Iron Man chef. <laughs> I'm glad you got, you know, when you get something off of your chest, but in this case, because, well, you know, how old she would be now. Yeah, you, you wouldn't want to see that chest. It's it's pretty flabby. Um, yeah, that's a that's a good one. That's a good one. She's dead, right? She's not here anymore. No, no, no. She's not. She's she is dead. Rest in peace. Off your giant flabby chest. I'd call you donkey, but you look more like Shrek when the Iron Man <laughs> chef busts the. See, it's one thing to call someone an ass and being like a donkey, but then you take it to another level and you just call them an ogre. You didn't have to do her like that. Go Giant flabby chest. I'd call you donkey, but you look more like Shrek. When the Iron Man chef busts a rhyme, I'll open up on you like a fine red wine. Open it up a fine red wine. I'll open up on you. About to open up a can of whip ass in this place. The Iron Chef. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We like the references there. Reference in the series as well. Very good. Very Shrek. good. When the Iron Man chef busts a rhyme. Oh, he called himself the Iron Man. I was thinking of the series that he's a part of, Iron Chef, but then Iron Man. Right, he's the Iron Man with the irons coming through with the bars. Open up on you like a fine red wine. I'm a culinary innovator. You're no create. That was cool when he's just spitting the food out behind and just kind of. Oh, he's spitting the wine out. I'm a open up on you like a. F oh, oh no, he did it. Oh, vicious. Fine red wine. I'm a culinary innovator. You're no creator. Regurgitating French plates like a glorified translator. Favorite disses here, like we talked about when Julia Childs got down to the heart of the matter, and this is Gordon now getting down to the heart of the matter from his side. You know, I'm an innovator. I, I come up with new and exciting and refreshing recipes. All you did really was just translate all French recipes and put them into a book and just bring over French dishes for the American audience. You didn't do something new and innovative with it and really contribute to it. See what he's doing there? That's a good, that's the type of disses that I like. I like that. Innovator, you're no creator. Regurgitating French plates like a glorified translator. I'm fresh, you're past your expiration date. All right, fuck it. Blue team, drop the bullion base. Yes, yes. I'll see you the bullion base, right? It's some type of sauce, isn't it? The bullion base, but it also plays off a of base, like drop the base and blue team from Hell's Kitchen, blue team, red team. I love that blue team. Yes, chef. It's just, the visuals are amazing to this. Past your expiration date. I right, fuck it. Blue team, drop the bullion base. Yes, chef. <laughs> And we got to fuck it. We got to fuck it, didn't we? I feel like sometimes Lloyd drops out of accent a little bit, but it's not bad. It's not a bad English. You're past your expiration date. All right, fuck it. Blue team, drop the bull, you bitch. Yes, sir. I've seen your little show, and it sure ain't pretty. One part, big bird, two parts, Miss Piggy. You can't... Oh, he's vicious. Oh, that one hurt me. Oh, we got a Sesame Street Muppet Show bars going on here. But one part, big bird, right? Because again... Gordon Ramsay, being British, you call girls birds, big bird, right? One part big bird. And wasn't Julia Child, she was she was really tall too, I'm pretty sure. So she's literally a, a big bird. Get it? Nice. 
And then two parts, Miss Piggy. Yeah, we get the Miss Piggy bars. Okay. Oink, oink. Bake it on. Little show when it sure ain't pretty. One part, big bird. Two parts, Miss Piggy. You can't test me with your fatty recipes. Call your book master in the art of heart disease. I mean, it's Woof. Robert. Yes, chef. Look at page 408. Tell me who the fuck yes, wants to learn to cook calf brains. <laughs> I mean, it's rubbish. Yes, chef. Da, da, da. Yes, chef. I love how they're just rushing around, panicking behind them. That's great. And actually, like... Can somebody look this up and let me know, but is there literally on page 408 in her book, How to Cook Calf Brain? I just love that. And I love how he's critiquing like, you use so much butter and stuff in your recipes, mastering the art of heart disease, not mastering the art of cooking. Get the flip on that. There's some, there's some nice bars going down. Yes, yeah, chef. Look at page 408. Tell me who the fuck yes, wants to learn to cook calf brains. You call these oh, chef. All this stale and soft. Now here, take this jacket. Oh, love the cliffhanger. As we see so often in American television and on reality TV shows nowadays, someone just says a wild line, and then there's this dramatic drop in music and pause, and we just wait, and we wait, and... Hi, would you like to learn about Viagra? <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying, though. It just flips to commercials, and it just purposefully makes you wait. And then what really pisses me off is when we come back onto the show, and they literally, like, just repeat the action and everything that happened from, like, the past minute. And then we finally catch up to the point. Like, just jump back into it. Don't remind us what we miss. But maybe because we live in such an ADHD generation, we've already forgotten by all the shiny, colorful commercials and louder volume. That is a thing. Doesn't that piss you off when the volume just gets louder on commercials? All right, I'm digressing. I'm digressing here, people. I'm exibli exibilifying? Yeah, that's a fucking word now. I do what I want on this channel. I'm exibilifying my own form of ADD. Where were we? <laughs> yeah, this is good. This is good. The epic rap battles of history on it. Take this jacket and fuck off. Talking about being raw with the rhymes. Normally raw is a good thing, but obviously in the kitchen raw mm, you don't you don't want to have that raw food you're really stale and soft you've gone off with it some good stuff here and also playing off of hell's kitchen give me the jacket and fuck off how many times does he ask for the jacket when basically it's like you know his version of firing someone so in this case he's given her the jacket and he wants her to take it because then he's gonna be like here give it back get out of there no, get oh and you you can hear the uh the skillet going too that's nice and look at everyone so nervous as he's judging it oh <laughs> just great visual references and shout outs to the tv series now give it back and fuck off no please your defeat's guaranteed can see i've got this in the bag sous vide <laughs> michelin and so hey i know that one i know that one sous vide when you cook like meats and you cook things in the bag and put it in the water and boil it because you want to cook it through evenly. and You don't want to ruin the outside of the meat and also you want to maintain and harness all the moisture on the inside. Come on over. Listen, we're going to have a barbecue one day for all the subscribers. I don't know if I can fit you all in the house, but I'm Daddy Knox is going to cook for you. Daddy Knox is going to cook. We'll do hamburgers, hot dogs. I got deer meat too. Deer jerky, anybody? Maybe? Is that too far? It's okay. It's all delicious. It's all delicious. You have enough drinks, you're not going to give a shit what I'm cooking. It's, it's all going to be good. Your defeat's guaranteed. Can see. I've got this in the bag. Sous vide. <laughs> Michelin and D. You've done well for yourself. But as a person, you couldn't get a star on you. I could freeze a steak. <laughs> Michelin. Okay. But why didn't she use that in the first verse? Because that's when he dropped the Michelin lines. I feel like it would have been better used for the first verse. Why did that get pushed back to her second verse? Anyways, digressing again. But playing off of the fact that, yeah, you could get stars for your restaurant, but you and your customer service, because it is so terrible, you could not get a single star on Yelp. You were just, you're a terrible human being, is what she's saying. You've done well for yourself, but as a person, you couldn't get a star on you. I could freeze a steak with those frosted tips. What's with Oof. that bitter taste in every word from your lips? You screw. Uh, I like that, that bitter taste, like having a bitter taste in your mouth. But obviously, like Gordon Ramsay always looks pissed off and just looks like he's, you know, not happy with, with the world. But, you know, if you lived in a country where it rained most of the time and you don't know what sunshine is, you would be pretty unhappy too. Sorry, British people. I love you. I love you. <laughs> All right, where are we going? He's a steak with those frost All right, Frosted Tips. Yeah, he's got like the NSYNC JT tips going on freezing the steak with it i like that what's with that bitter taste in every word from your lips you scream at women what the fits that your vision make you the busiest bitch in the kitchen Ooh. Ooh. i 
like that. I that's that's a vicious one. You're the pissiest bitch in the kitchen. Her delivery is so good with the personality. This is this is so much fun. I'm really loving this. But uh, obviously, you have the machismo culture and the old stereotype, the woman belongs in the kitchen. Well, you know, you want to diss me and take shots of me and my feminine qualities. You are the pissiest bitch in the kitchen. And then what was it, like the moods that you're pitching? Because we know that a lot of what he does is more exaggerated because it makes for good television he's self-aware of what he's doing and the entertainment that he's creating get it so he's pitching this entertainment to us to the networks to get to hey i mean look how successful he is whatever man man's raining in dough right now i love how she's messing with that pepper shaker as she's uh as she's just dropping that fatal diss right there she did do it she did did you see what she just did to that chicken that chicken just got decapitated like it was nothing people i'll pat you on the head melt you stick it to you all butter references like a pat of butter small amount of butter and then she's obviously taking she loves her butter bar she loves her butter people so she's she's buttering them up right now Get the same butter someone up, but in this in this essence, she's flipping it. She's cooking them. Oh, I'm so glad you spent this time with me. No, he's a dick. Bon appetit. Ho, ho. Ho. <laughs> bon appetit. Enjoy your meal. Enjoy that dick. Go on and eat it. It's delicious. And uh, thanks for spending time with me. Wasn't that how she always signed off her show? That was a good battle, man. Why did we wait so long to do this one? That was fun. No, he's a dick. Bon appetit. Hang on, was that another like live bird that she just murdered? Oh yeah, definitely. There's another one. Watch this. Watch this hammer. This hammer game is vicious. Glad you spent this time with me. No, he's a dick. Bon appetit. Ho, ho. And then she comes back up with a glass of wine. Yo, that beat was awesome. Mamrie Hart, she did a great job. I love the mix of like the epic sounds and then like the hard rock sounds. This was a good one. Just the energy and the personality that Lloyd injected into Ramsey. He did such a great job. And then the personality that was injected into Julia Childs. I think this is one of those where both had good bars that stung. But for me, sometimes what stands out is just the encapsulation of the overall performance and what really got me was just julia childs like she just had some amazing rhyme schemes and just the way that she flipped some of the words and i just love the personality behind the delivery and the way that she just changed her voice on certain stuff it was so unique and so memorable that even though i i fucking love gordon ramsay i'm gonna give this one very very slightly to julia childs but anyways erb you were Knoxville certified. So hope you guys liked today's video. If you did, be sure to smash that like button. Comment down below any other ERBs you want to see me do or if there's other artists you want to see me check out. I try to read all of your comments, guys. I respond as much as I can, so please keep commenting and keep posting. Also, if you're here at the end of this video, obviously you're enjoying the content. Do me a favor. Support the channel directly. Subscribe. Notifications on. As always, it's your reminder to stay safe, stay positive. It's Knoxville. I'll catch you again. I'm out.